Hey everybody, we are live. I think we're live. I'm just going to verify that everything is streaming like it's supposed to. Let's see, we're up on YouTube. We're up on Facebook. And great. Thanks for joining everybody. I am Ryan Douthit. I am broadcasting live from the Driving Sports Studio here in Bellevue, Washington. And today we are going to talk about the 2022 Hyundai Santa Cruz. This is a new small pickup uh, introduced by Hyundai a few days ago. I've been on the road, so I uh, had to wait a few days before we could do the live stream, and here I am. And hopefully you are here too. And if you're not here live, you can, and you're just watching this on the replay, uh, that's cool too. Uh, be sure to subscribe uh, to make sure that you catch our live shows as they come up, because this is our live channel. Most of what you see here will be our live stuff. Of course, we also have another channel, uh, which is our main channel, uh, which is just Driving Sports TV, which you can see there. Um, is anybody in the audience yet? Uh, we just went live a second ago. I don't like doing those long, like five minute long pre-rolls uh, before a show. So instead, I'm just gonna sit here and yammer for a couple of minutes uh, before we get into the meat and potatoes of the day, which is of course, the new Hyundai Santa Cruz. Um, so if you're in the audience, say, hey, tell me where you're viewing from. That would be great. Um, get a couple shout outs. Keegan Dubois. Hi, how you doing? Thanks for joining us. Where are you watching from there, uh, Keegan? Is it Keegan Dubois. There he goes. Oh, looking uh, pretty uh, cool there with his icon. And uh, this is our new studio, by the way. Um, we've actually had this studio for about a year. But uh, I've been slowly adding to it and getting it ready for what we are doing today, which uh, this is just kind of a seat of our pants, feel it out, kind of work with what as we go kind of a situation thing. Ah, MA, cool. Boom. Anybody else there? Uh, if you're watching, I'm showing a few viewers, go ahead and post a comment. Uh, and we are talking, of course, about the Hyundai Santa Fe. Santa Fe, did I just say Santa Fe? All their names kind of sound the same after a while. Santa Cruz. Um, it, Santa Cruz is kind of a cool town, by the way. Um, I know some people from Santa Cruz. I've been to Santa Cruz. Uh, it is, of course, a seaside town in California. It's kind of hip, and um, I think they do surfing there, I think. <laughs> anyway, um, let's get into this. This is the new Santa Cruz. Now, you are noticing that it is a pickup, but it kind of looks a little bit like a car. It's like a car puck, car pickup. Uh, yeah, I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna try that. Uh, but what we have here is a pickup that is smaller than a regular car. You know, it's, um, it's basically smaller than a Frontier, smaller than a Ridgeline, definitely smaller than a Ranger. Uh, this is kind of a new class and Hyundai is definitely trying to tell people don't call it a truck. It is not a truck. They're, they're referring it to specifically, what did the frame, what did they call it? The ultimate sport adventure vehicle. That is, that is an amazing claim, I think. <laughs> um, Oh, let me go switch this up here. I am uh, kind of new to the setup here, so I'm going to be kind of monkeying with uh, a bunch of the buttons as we're doing this. Um, but as you can see, I think this is actually one of the best looking vehicles you can buy. I can't say today, but that you will be buying eventually. Uh, it is just absolutely gorgeous, especially in this this truck. Yeah, and, and Lewis C, you agree. Oh, your cat looks angry. But that does look amazing. And yeah, Hyundai El Camino, it is it. Most comparisons have been to like the Subaru Baja and I've driven the Baja and that was a great vehicle. And they actually had a turbo version of the Baja, but the Baja's problem was that it was based on a legacy and they didn't really do any additional engineering to up the towing capability. So towing was always a problem on that vehicle. And um, this one, they have fixed that and we'll, we'll get into the specs uh, just a moment here. Now, one thing is we don't know price. I don't think pricing, I have no information on pricing. Um, and I don't know if the model that they're showing is a top of the line trim, if it's a sport trim, you know, sometimes the grill work when they change that can look completely different. This one though looks pretty good. I think we need a little bit of background music here, just a, it's kind of, where's that background music at? There we go. Okay, just a little bit of background music in the background, just feeling like I'm kind of like talking into a void. 
Um, the bed. Uh, I actually have a measurement on the bed there, Brennan. Um, where did that go? Well, we're going to get into the full specs in a bit, but I wasn't going to talk about the bed. You know, there's a go. The, the bed length is on the upper part 48.4 and on the lower part 52.1 which is significantly smaller than even the frontier which is currently i believe the smallest pickup sold in america um yeah that's kind of like lewis uh you're saying that that is like the uh cross track khaki it is just a little bit i think it's a little greener though uh, but it's hard to tell because without seeing it in person, um, there could be color cast on the video, which can tilt it very slightly one way or the other. We just don't know right now. Anyway, let's go over some specs here. There's gonna be two engine options. Of course, they're going to have, uh, where is that? I should be more organized than this, but it's a Sunday. I don't need to be. Okay, standard powertrain is a 2.5 liter direct injected inline four cylinder with 190 horsepower and 180 pound-feet of torque and that one comes with a standard automatic transmission now if you've watched any of our videos with the dct transmissions where they have a dual clutch setup um, we've seen some fails with that in off-road situations before and so this vehicle that's going to be a big question mark um, as to whether or not the hydraulic standard eight speed is the one you want to go with because there will also be a 2.5 liter direct injected turbo engine that puts out 275 horsepower and 310 pound feet of torque. Uh, that is pretty darn impressive for a vehicle of this size. That one, however, will be mated to an eight speed dual clutch automatic, which is interesting. And to make that even a little bit more interesting is the towing capacity. Now you don't usually think you want to tow with a dual clutch. It's just not, it's not very good at heat dissipation. So a dual, but the dual clutch here, they claim will tow 5,000 pounds. Yesterday I was driving down I-5 and I noticed uh, one of those, I think it's called a tab um, trailer. That's kind of a smallish trailer, but it's still a trailer. You can stand up in it. And I saw it was being towed by a Honda CRV that was smaller than the trailer. Sometimes you, you got to ask, you know, can you do it, but should you do it? And in that case, I don't think you should do it. Um, Steve, you are asking if the curb weight was mentioned. And you know what? Um, I did not see the weight anywhere on any of the specifications yet. Uh, but I think that that will be a, a definitely a big question when it comes time to considering if this is going to be legit for towing, because uh, you're not going to want to tow if it's... <laughs> Uh, if it's if it's a lightweight okay so we have two different towing capacities depending on which transmission that you go with the 2.5 or which powertrain the 2.5 liter four cylinder will do 3,500 pounds which is still pretty good and then of course you have to go with the turbo and the dct to get 5,000 pounds of towing capacity uh, of course h-track all-wheel drive is standard and uh, it does use the same setup as a standard hyundai h-track which is a clutch in the middle that transfers power front to back. Now, their wording here is a little bit, it's doing a little bit of, you know, uh, heavy lifting in terms of uh, trying to do the sell on it. But they say that like sport mode puts more power to the back. In my experience with Hyundai, that means that you're gonna get a maximum of 50-50. Um, you're never gonna get more power to the back in a standard situation. Um, no matter what mode you're in. So they probably just force it to a 50-50 lock, basically. Uh, and even that lock is still computer controlled based on current conditions. Uh, their locks are never um, really uh, a real lock. Uh, and that, that is a battle that I will, I will continue to fight until the end of my days. Um, like all modern cars, this is going to be completely full of uh, lots of different uh, safety tech, we get foreign, uh, standard is forward collision avoidance, of course, everything has that now, uh, lane keep assist and driver attention warning. What is interesting is that they don't include adaptive cruise control as standard. So they're not taking a page out of Toyota's playbook here. They are saying that basically they're going to require it as an option. They call it highway drive assist. Uh, and that is definitely an option not going to be included. Is that video playing? Yeah, it is. Okay, it's just really, really s still. 
You can see the inside here, we have the standard design ethos of Hyundai, but that is a digital cluster. So this is clearly a higher trim model. I, I don't know if the lower trims are gonna have all digital clusters or not. Uh, I didn't remember reading anything about that, uh, but uh, that one there is um, digital clearly. And then of course they have a new infotainment in the middle there as well. Interesting that they're going with the lever for the automatic transmission. Um, they aren't going with, you know, push buttons or dials or anything. They, they have push buttons on other vehicles of theirs. So it's interesting that they're going with the traditional lever. I think that's playing into the whole fact that this is supposed to be kind of a, a small pickup. So they're kind of going a little bit more retro in that design. You can see it has hill descent control right there. And then also you can see the traditional center lock, which of course, as I will say a hundred times is not a real lock. It is a suggestive lock. <laughs> um, Khan is asking, what do you call these types of vehicles? Are they still SUVs? No, this would, I would think this would be legitimately a pickup, um, not a truck, but a pickup, uh, because it kind of reminds me of the old, like Datsuns. When I was growing up um, in the 70s, yeah, my family had one of those tiny, 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 like you can't imagine how small they are by today's comparisons, uh, she, uh, had a, um, it was a Datsun pickup. And that thing, it was so small. And this kind of reminds me more of that. It's a small, fun, not going to be used for serious towing, not going to be used for serious loads, uh, but used for around town. In fact, they even call it, what are they calling it here? They had a specific term they were using, the the Santa Cruz was developed to be the ultimate sport adventure vehicle, a moniker confirmed confirmed in their early consumer research. The research found that consumers, often living in urban environments whose lifestyles include a need to escape to weekend adventures of all kinds. So it is for weekend adventures. Now, mating a DCT with a turbo engine obviously has me asking questions because I, I both Kia and Hyundai sister companies constantly show their vehicles with DCTs doing extreme, what I would consider, I think most consumers would consider fairly extreme off-road driving. And I'm not talking like rock crawling or anything, rock crawling or anything like that, but I'm just talking like, you know, extreme high on throttle stuff, sliding around, going up steep grades with, art with, you know, with a little bit of articulation and definitely transferring power around. But with like the DCTs, typically they overheat. And um, uh, somebody had commented on one of my videos that they had heard an interview with a Hyundai engineer that said that they've taken that into account with this DCT and that this DCT will not overheat uh, based on the way that they set it up. Is that real? Is that fake? I just don't know. Uh, we will have to wait and see. Hello, Matthew. How are you doing? Uh, hello, DR. Also, uh, you're from the, uh, your, what's the ground clearance? Yeah, we don't know. We don't know any of that yet. Uh, we don't have full specs on the vehicle. Um, I have confirmed with Hyundai that we will be getting one to test later this year. I have asked actually for an entry level, uh, but I also want a DCT. I kind of want them both uh, for different reasons. I want the DCT because I'm curious if it will succeed or fail on our typical off-road tests. Uh, but I kind of also won't just want the regular one because I think that that'll be the higher volume one. And also I kind of want it to be successful. I don't want vehicles to fail, uh, but if they do, that's on the manufacturers, honestly. and. A vehicle like this, they're showing it off-road. So yeah, we're going to take it onto dirt because why wouldn't we? Uh, same thing with the tell you, tell you ride. People have been saying, well, why are you showing it off-road in your reviews? But the fact is, is Hyundai, uh, sorry, tell you ride, Kia in their reviews show it going off-road and doing some pretty like, you know, slidey, climby things. They're not just like tiptoeing. They're, they're doing real off-road stuff. So that is... Um, kind of interesting. Uh, let's see. Il Babuino? Sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that. Will the Santa Cruz also get a more powerful plug-in hybrid? And I would say probably. I think it will be really surprising if any car manufacturer uh, does not have a hybrid or plug-in hybrid version in the wings and probably a plug-in hybrid uh, for every brand new vehicle that's being developed. Uh, like even the new 4Runner 2023 
ish maybe um, i'm sure they will have a plug-in hybrid version of that as well and the reason for that is things like my state washington state yesterday um washington state voted uh, the legislature passed legislation that will require that you cannot buy a gas-powered vehicle in the state of washington starting in 2030. It'll be the most aggressive electric only initiative in the country. Now, there are a lot of if, ands, or buts with that legislation, including um, they have to switch over to a per mileage taxation system because currently it's gas tax and gas tax, they're just not selling enough gas. Uh, so they have to move legislation to a different type of um, moneymaker. And so they, they want to they wanna tax mileage. How do they do that is a big question. And, they, and even this legislation has that as a caveat, that they have to have that in place before they do this thing. It has not also been signed by Governor Inslee yet. Uh, it is still in discussion. So sorry, little tangent there. Uh, let's look at some of this thing doing what they consider a little off-roading. So I'm watching this right here and okay, that's fine. That's downhill grade. That's not a big deal. There's a little ruts there. Okay. Yeah, they're pushing a little power through. I'm just, I have not actually watched this video yet. I'm hoping there's something in here that can tell me a little bit about the all wheel drive system. Front wheels, okay, who cares? Yes, yes, action, action. Although you can enjoy the video, I guess, here. Turn the music up. I'll dip out for a second. Sometimes I wonder about manufacturer footage, like, why that shot? You don't even see the horizon. Like, like windshield. Look, it's a windshield. Are you going to get anything else here, or is it just going to be that? Okay, there we go. A little slow motion side shot. It does look good in motion, and that one uh, clearly has the cover on the back. I like the fact that this actually has, like, a really usable bed, and that's one thing I really like about these unibodies. Back when I did the Ridgeline review uh, just a few weeks ago, I, I love the trunk in that thing. It is so cool because me specifically, I carry a lot of gear. Um I carry a lot of gear with me in the vehicle that I need to be secured. And sometimes the cabin isn't the best place to do it because you can just look in and go, oh, look, there's a camera right there. So ooh, that's some extreme maneuvers there. <laughs> Sorry, just I'm, I'm judging. I'm being all the judgy on their off-road stuff. <laughs> Sorry, off-road stuff. Um, yeah, so uh, I, I need I need secure storage, and that's one reason why I really like the Forerunner is because it has tons of secure storage in the back, and one reason why I don't usually go for a truck. But these unibody trucks have proper storage in the back, which is really nice. Um, actually, let's see, can we uh, let's bump over here, and I think we had a shot of that bed. Yeah, okay, so here's the bed open, and let's look in. Okay, so they have a. Oh, that's kind of cool. I like that. It's like a rolly top thing uh, built in. I'm sure that's an option and doesn't come standard. Yes, yes, I see it. You know, I got to give them credit, though. This is the most B-roll that I've seen, a B-roll being like detail shots of a vehicle that I've seen with a brand new vehicle release. We have like four videos. All of them are like five to ten minutes long. It's fantastic. Uh, regarding our state <laughs> going to electric only in 2030, yikes, time to move. Yeah. <sighs> like I said, there's lots of caveats uh, on that. So it's not something that's going to happen immediately. Um, yeah. So talking about electric, the tell you, oh, not, not electric, but the tell you right also joined the Rebel Rally last year going off road with the Bronco uh, Sports, Kia, and Hyundai are definitely positioned themselves in their market. Yes. And the funny thing is that, like, when we do an off road review with one of those vehicles and like a Hyundai or a Kia and somebody, and, and they don't do well for whatever reason, the first thing people always say is they're not meant for that. It's like, yeah, but all of Hyundai and Kia's marketing says they are. So, Oh, speaking of Hyundai and Kia marketing and off-road and all that stuff, the the press release does not necessarily state if this is all trims. I would assume it's not all trims, but they just kind of make it as a blanket statement that this vehicle comes with 20-inch alloy wheels. Who wants to go off-road with 20-inch alloy wheels? I really hope... Um, 
I really hope that those 20 inch alloy wheels are an option. They do not say so in the press release. They just say that it comes with it. So hopefully there's a 16 option or 17 because you want as much sidewall as possible on that tire so it doesn't pinch when you hit unexpected things and that could even be potholes in new jersey honestly i would not want to drive 20 inch wheels on the roads in new jersey let alone um uh you know just these big wheels are, are kind of crazy and yeah, Steve, you have a very good point. Off-roading in these stock videos is just driving on dirt roads uh, for the most part. I would say that uh, Ford had some surprising rugged, surprisingly rugged stuff for their Bronco Sport when they uh, released those B-roll packages. Those were actually pretty good. They were showing it to some real stuff. Okay, Louis C, you say, I lived in Brazil and there are similar vehicles offered there. I thought these compact pickups make so much sense. And they do. I think they really make a lot of sense. And yeah, even as front wheel drive vehicles, I mean, I could see in LA this being super popular. Um, you know, going out to the desert, having a party, that kind of stuff. And like during the week, use it as a commuter vehicle with good gas economy and probably fairly comfortable. I mean, it's going to be a Hyundai and Hyundais are actually pretty well put together and they have good features and they're comfortable. Look at that power socket. I have a lot of questions about those AC sockets though. Um, how much juice they can put out. Cause I know the one in my forerunner is practically useless. Um, it has AC, you can plug it in. Uh, I can charge a drone battery off of it, which is, you know, useful for me. But it is not necessarily, oh, let's not do all this, do this. But it's not um, as useful as it could be. After having the Ford F 150, which we have a review coming up, I think in the next one or two weeks, uh, that F 150 hybrid with the, uh, we didn't even have the big pro power package. We have the kind of the medium one, uh, 28 kilo, uh, 2.8 kilowatts. Anyway, it was the medium one, and you could just plug anything into it. I, I, outside of a TIG welder, uh, but like apparently the big one, you can actually do that, which is kind of cool. Um, yes, Matthew, you came late to the stream, apparently, because I started it with the with the engine sizes. Um, the base engine is a 2.5 liter direct injection, direct injected inline four cylinder with 190 horsepower and 180 pound feet of torque. That one comes with a standard eight speed automatic. And then there is also a turbo option uh, that is a 2.5 liter direct injected turbo with 275 plus horsepower. It says, I guess final numbers aren't in yet. And 310 plus pound feet of torque linked to an eight speed dual clutch transmission. So uh yeah so what do we think uh what do you guys think do you like it hate it oh thank you somebody clarified that that ford was a 2.4 kilowatt thank you sorry i didn't yeah i drive so many vehicles it's hard for them to stay ordered in my brain sometimes uh what so what do you guys think which is is this something you want to buy is this something you're interested in post a comment let's uh let's let's see is there anything you're concerned about i mean those 20 inch wheels kind of concerning the bed isn't very big slightly larger bed would be nice um now let's let's digress for just a moment you're bringing up the rivian r1t here uh that does come with 20s for their all terrains but the rivian is a bigger vehicle so i'm guessing that the tire diameter is bigger in general uh so it's going to naturally have more sidewall i should have caveated that Anyway, I should have mentioned that um, this being such a small vehicle, the 20 inch is a particularly large wheel, considering the overall uh, diameter of the tire on that wheel package. Um, so, you know, the Rivian is going to, it, it just has a bigger wheel for their, for their all terrain. Uh, stuff. And also, you know, the Rivian being it's a truck, they might have been running uh, eight layer tires, which are way more durable than a standard four layer tire or a six layer tire. Uh, they're also heavier. Um, so they might have just used them for shoots. The reason why not everybody runs an eight layer tire is because um, they're way more durable, but they're also way heavier. And then you basically kill your fuel economy and they all usually make a little bit more noise too, um, just because they're a much firmer tire. Uh, so, you know, you can get, a, get away with a lot of stuff on that. Um, 
oh, okay, good. Yeah, thank you, Yas, for pointing out that somebody did find out they, they will come with 18s. I, I still feel that's kind of big for such a small truck, though. I still feel like that's more than what we really need to see on something this small. Um, LeBron is, is saying Ridgeline or Santa Cruz. I think, I think they're very different. Uh, the Ridgeline being more a competitor to the truck, to a proper truck, because it's, it, it has the dimensions in the bed to actually put a big piece of plywood in. This one clearly does not. Uh, this one is more of your lifestyle pickup where you're never actually going to use it for work. And I think that's kind of what the Ridgeline became. And I think that honestly, Honda would have more success with a product like this than they would with the Ridgeline. The Ridgeline is always facing an uphill battle competing against um, uh, the other um, truck makers because they're constantly having to prove they're a truck. This one, Hyundai came out immediately and said, this is not a truck. Please do not compare it against it because we have no intention of it being one. Um, Probably. Um, the only thing, Alex, so Alex is saying that the powertrain options are the same as Sorento, and it probably is the same weight. That's possible. But this thing will tow 5,000 pounds, and it's possible that they also have a lot more structure in it that might add to the weight, which would actually be good for towing. So uh, there's a lot of questions that we have. Uh, kind of floating out about this vehicle. Um, I wanted to kind of point out to just digress because somebody had brought up where was that comment on the Rivian R1T. Speaking of electric vehicles and my state going to electric only by 2030. Um, you know, when you say a vehicle has 200 miles range, 300 miles range, once you go off road, that's like 30 miles range. <laughs> I mean, it's like, so the idea of these uh, electric trucks and all that stuff, they sound great. And you look at the range, you're like, well, that sounds fantastic. But the moment you're actually like really working all four wheels, the power just goes away so fast. And so I, so I think it's really smart. Um, who was it? Uh, Jeep recently had, um, you know, they're promoting, they're doing trailhead charging stations for their new electric plug-in Jeep. I think that's brilliant because we need stuff like that. Uh, Rivian's not talking about it. Um, nobody else is really talking about that. I mean, you have Tesla who owns charging station networks. They have by far and away the best charging network in the United States. Uh, but, you know, as far as off-roading, we're still way behind the curve on that. That is just something that we're just not very good at yet. Um, and so hopefully that, you know, we'll get there, but it, we're not quite there yet. So when, as soon as I heard that, you know, our state is going electric only in 2030, like you can't even import a new car from another state. They are, they are, they are absolutely drawing the line. Um, I, a, I think 2029 will be a lot of car sales because <laughs> a lot of, you know, this last chance to get a gas vehicle basically. And then also, um, but you have to ask the question, like what will battery ranges be for anybody who wants to go off right? Are they even saying, we don't care about that anymore. We, you know, we, we just want you to get to the trailhead at the base and then you can bicycle in. Yeah. But what if you want to go to the, the stream, um, you know, in the middle of nowhere, you want to go to this river or this really far away place. Sorry, you may not have an option. And that's disappointing, but I, uh, that that's off topic here. So let's go, let's bring this back around to the Santa Cruz. Uh, let's see, let's see. There's some other comments here. Uh, Steve, you are, it would have been near the top of your shopping list last year. Same towing capacity as a 4Runner, uh, more than the X3, X5, and the Con in that size. Uh, lost because, yeah, the Sorento lost. It's good towing. Oh, did it. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm really interested in this little pickup, honestly. Um, I don't know. Do we need to get another vehicle in the house? <laughs> I'd love to have a truck to be able to move for our tire test to be able to like, you know, actually like, because I don't want to throw tires like muddy, awful tires in the back of the forerunner. I actually like my forerunner. I want to keep it around. Uh, but the, uh, the, a truck would be really, really helpful. Um, yeah, not sure. You know, the more I look at this, I really like those angles. Like if you look, I'm just going to pause that right there. If you look um, right along 
the the kind of the the that's not the waistline the waistline has a little crease but there's that really harsh ridge at the bottom side of the door that is just really i love that crease in there it really helps break up the side panels and especially like the ridge line like and actually you notice they didn't do massive cladding on the wheels like the new subaru has and the new uh ridge line has everybody's been, been going clad city and this one's not doing that they've yeah they have cladding in the spots where you kind of need it front um, lower bumper, side skirts, sure, because you're going to get gravel there. But you don't need it over the big fenders and all that stuff. And they've avoided that here, which I think is really a good option. Yeah, and st speaking of my, my digression there on charging, Steve also brings up a really good point that batteries are a huge problem for towing and extended road trips. How are you going to do that? Now, they probably will have lots of exemptions and that kind of stuff, I imagine. And this is the question everybody's going to be asking. This or ridge line, um, and I think it really comes down to. I mean, what the, I think that, if I'm not mistaken, the ridge line's towing capacity is five thousand. Also, I think I don't have that note down here, um, but uh, this is smaller. This is also has less of a useful bed. I think that it will compete though with the ridge line because a lot of the people who buy the ridge line who ultimately buy and pay money for a Ridgeline aren't people who necessarily would have bought an F-150 or a Frontier anyway. They don't really want a truck truck, they want a car truck. And this being a smaller, more car truck, car truck, um, I think it's it's gonna find it's gonna find some owners, I think. Um, yeah, Lewis, uh, I agree. The current Hyundai styling does work way better on this than the Elantra. I'm not, not a big fan. I mean, I think the Elantra looks okay, uh, but um, I really like it here. I think that this really, this really works. It is a good futuristic looking, but not crazy uh, looking vehicle. And I am just disappointed that I was not invited to go take a look at it in person. Um, we all have our ins with certain manufacturers. Um, I'm on the list with Hyundai to get cars, but I am not invited to press events. And I'm not sure if it's because I refuse to participate in their games. Uh, by games on these press events they have these hashtag games where you have to like submit your photos of doing fun things and i'm always of the thought i'm a journalist i'm here to review the vehicle i'm not here to play a game like or a scavenger hunt and i'm probably considered a downer for that but um anyway i don't get invited to their events and that's okay um let's see oh yeah 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 we also have to talk about the fact that the Maverick is coming out, and that will probably be the bigger question between this and the Maverick. Um, until we actually see the proper announcement on the Maverick, though, we don't know powertrains or anything. I, I know there's a lot of rumors out there, but honestly, I don't I don't really even look at ru rumors all that often uh, these days, just because it kind of clouds. Like, you read all the rumors, and then it comes out, and then you're trying to remember, wait, was that the rumor or was that the fact? I, for I kind of forget. So... Yeah, it, it might be it. Uh, the front grill are daylight running lights. Yeah, same as the new Tucson. Yeah, so um, that is our look at the new Hyundai Santa Cruz. Um, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Um, but uh, I'd like to thank everybody for joining. I think this has been really kind of fun. Uh, we'll do some more of these in the future. Be sure to subscribe, like this video, share it. Uh, tell us what you think of uh, this vehicle in the comments. If you're here on the replay, um, we'd love to hear your thoughts as to uh, what you think of the Hyundai Santa Cruz. Also tell us what your thoughts are on Washington State voting to go, not voting, but the legislature deciding that we're gonna go all electric by 2030. I know it was a bit of a digression in the middle of this, but it just happened yesterday. So it's still fresh on my mind. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and I think Peace out on this. And uh, again, enjoy the rest of your Sunday. I'm Ryan Douthit for Driving Sports TV. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you right here often, I hope. <laughs>